What's goody? It's your boy, and I'm back with another banging video. And today I got Akila Mac. Hey, and y'all, I got her on a bird video with me, man. Wait, hey, mm -hmm. honestly, if I if if I'm being honest with y'all, I requested the first bird video on her channel. So y'all, if yes. give me a little appreciation for that, y'all. Say I put her on, so I got her in a bird video with us. Um. We got NBA Legends explaining how crazy good Larry Bird was. Now, to all the new subscribers, you feel me? Please subscribe to my shit channel and subscribe to her channel, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Which is going to be in the description. All the other people, man, it's up. What's up, my bird gang? Yeah, we back. Okay, let's get it. Got a, got a text to that. What? I don't even know what that is. Let's get it. The man from Indiana who gave us an 80s to remember by lighting up a battle between the Celtics and the Lakers will forever be heralded as one of the players who saved basketball. Bird and Magic's coast-to-coast -coast war and jaw-dropping styles gave the NBA the boost it needed before the emergence of Michael Jordan. But for Bird, with three titles, two finals MVPs, and three consecutive MVP seasons, some forget just how good Goated. he really was. Today we look at NBA players explaining how crazy good Larry Bird was in his prime. Before we get into all that, if you want to win a PS5 with NBA 2K22 and Madden NFL 22 included, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. Huh. When speaking of the NBA's greatest of all time, there's always five or ten guys that hit the list. Each carries a different generation. From 50s Bill Russell to 60s Wilt Chamberlain or 70s Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 80s Magic Johnson, 90s Michael Jordan, 2000s Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, to today's LeBron James. Some get overlooked when they shouldn't, for example, Tim Duncan, and others get left behind because of the lack of titles like Charles Barkley. What happens when all these players talk of another group? Hey, I just want to stop it real quick, bro. Uh, why did, like, okay, just because of the lack of titles, that shouldn't knock your greatness at all. I feel like because, okay, just because you couldn't make it to the finals, that's a team thing. To win the finals, you got to win it as a team. So, bro, if... Just because you didn't make it there and win it, you could have still been the best player in the league every year and just didn't have the good enough team to make it there. And I'm, I'm Charles Barkley was a real good player, and it's not just for him. It's a lot of players get neglected because of that, and that pisses me off, bro. I like to put people in a conversation that's not supposed to be in it a lot, you know what I'm saying? And that's why, like, y'all be hating when I say LeBron's still number two, but, like, I, he's still firm number two. But Larry didn't moved up so much, he, like, number six on my I list. I just feel like there's, like, no number one, no number two. Right. I just feel like... <laughs> They are all great players. <laughs> Nobody, I mean, they all are good. I mean, but it's when it comes down, it's so it's competition. So now we gotta choose. We gotta pick sides. That's just how yeah. everybody feel when it comes to basketball, bro. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's great. But uh, we gonna jump back into it. We gonna speak a little bit more. Let's get it. Great, as if he was like no other. Larry Bird was lauded by most of these legends because he was one of them too. He was consistent, tough, offensively masterful, and one of the first big guys to shoot many three-point shots. LeBron James spoke candidly in an interview about how he was one of the few guys ever to win a three-point contest with a warm-up shirt on, LeBron referring to the time Larry won his yeah. third consecutive three-point contest. James continued, I would young guys that don't going. know him, you know, they, they think of Larry Bird as a jump shooter, uh, but he was so much more than that. He was a passer. He averaged double-digit rebounds. Um, he definitely took charges. And, um, you know, he's a straight-up complete basketball player, and me as a small forward. Later in his career, LeBron, LeBron adapted his game to the new way of basketball, which was a charge led by the Golden State Warriors in shooting more from behind the arc. LeBron was considered a big guy, but began shooting more threes, and no doubt was heavily influenced by the fact that Larry Legend had already achieved this feat in the 80s. In another interview, when asked about his top three of all time, LeBron put Larry Bird firmly in there with MJ and Dr. J. Oh my God. Three. Well deserved. Uh, uh, yeah, Larry Bird, Dr. J. Michael. Shaq had a very different opinion. Yo, hey, let's just put, let me just put this out there. All the hate, people, like, people, we, LeBron be getting, he showing all that, he be showing the love and the respect to people that they deserve. That's another thing we got to get LeBron the ups on, you know what I'm saying? He, he'll, he'll, he'll say that, you know what I'm saying? And nobody else want to hear about how good Larry Bird was, but the guy, the man himself. You know what I'm saying? We gotta put a little bit of respect on his name, man. They be y'all be mad when I say that longevity stuff, bro. It's he plays longer than everybody. There ain't no way that that's the only reason why he got that number one in scoring. But you gotta look at it like, yeah, nigga, that twenty something years, like that's yo, 
that's crazy, dude. Like he's he's a robot. Like dead ass, dude. Don't stop. He run on gas. Let's jump back. Let's jump back into it, though. You know, Larry initially, he said he disliked Bird because he was jealous. He thought, how could this regular looking guy do everything? Never really had a chance to play against Larry Bird, but I, I actually used to hate Larry Bird. I, 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 I hated. Him. Shaq soon realized as he grew older and wiser that despite getting the luck of the Irish with the Celtics, Larry made his own luck when it came to shooting the ball. Shaq, at 7'1", of course, had a completely different style of game at the time. He was built to the max and used brute force to impose his will on the defense and rack up the points, blocks, and rebounds. Shaq was also faster than most give him credit for, <laughs> particularly in the early part of his career. Yo, Shaq was crazy! <laughs> Bird was notoriously <laughs> slow, which was all the more Seven testament to his skill set, but his basketball IQ was just on a different planet. He once sank a shot from behind the backboard, which O'Neal chalked down to a fluke following a bet with his friend. Sam Vincent to Bird, and it goes <laughs> oh, Behind the backboard. Oh, I see. Shaq never really got the chance to play against Larry Bird, which is unfortunate, because I don't think it would have taken him so long to recognize greatness. On the other hand, six-time NBA champion Kareem Abdul-Jabbar battled Bird on numerous occasions while- Hey, he did too. Yeah, I, I, I mess with Kareem. And we gonna do- I'm gonna be doing a lot more on my channel for sure, and I think she gonna be doing something on her channel too, but I'm gonna be doing a lot more of my ultimate mixtape from Shaq, Kareem, to Magic. It's all coming, so trust me, I got it coming. I'm seeing them comments, you know what I'm saying? But one thing I did want to say about the Shaq, what Shaq was saying about Larry, you know, you gotta actually- Get on the court with somebody to actually experience their greatness sometime. Like, you see it on TV and now you're thinking, like like he's saying, it's a fluke. But if you would have actually been on the court with Larry, watching Larry cross, cross people up and then cross him up too, that's when you're going to respect it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a different type of respect you gain from being on it. So that that's, Shaq was just being dumbfounded in that situation. I feel like that's, how, in that situation, he was just being pretty, like, simple-minded because that man is dragging all like the people you mess with like yo yo greats he was he was dragging them so you know what i'm saying let's let's jump back into it Five. while playing with the showtime lakers bird got the better of him in the 1984 finals and took another two in a decade that was largely dominated by the purple and gold kareem spoke about how larry might have been the best he had played against and said how good was michael bird? jordan people i don't think people he people look at him and think yeah, oh he's a white guy he's, slow guy he's chubby white guy he <laughs> wore us out man. you know because he just this was this muscle here the one between his ears yeah that was his best you respect know, because he, he made the three pointers and he had assists and rebounded steals he was always at the right place at the right time on the court, you know, one of the great players, you know, I had the opportunity to play against. 11-time All-Star Charles Barkley, a regular season MVP during a star-filled 90s, was once asked, are you better than Bird? And he took a long pause before answering, which is very telling. Am I better than Bird? Oh, man, that's a great question. <laughs> Most great players respond immediately with how they think they're the best, it. because you have to have that kind of mentality in order to get to the top. Instead, Barkley answered, True. I'm a better rebounder. Probably a better defender. He's a better shooter, obviously. You know, a, a lot of people talk about who's better. But you have to right. think, you have to have that mentality. No, no, you know, you, you know. Okay, okay, right? Like, would you, yeah, you a lot right. Of people talk about who's better. It's just. It's, it's, it, it be, everybody have different. Right, different things yeah, they're really good at. You know, and some weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And it is different errors too, so it's kind of hard to judge him. You know what I'm saying? Because like he was saying, I was better at Larry, better at, than Larry at this, but Larry was better than me at that. It's right. always like that, and then that's the that's the big debate with you know what I'm saying. Anybody that can go debate Jar Jordan and LeBron, you know what I'm saying? If you talk about Kobe mm -hmm. and Jar whoever you talking about, it's like oh he was good at this, but he was good at that. You will never stop that debate. You know what I'm saying? That's just how that go. So. It, but I like the way he approached that question. He wasn't just like, oh, yeah, I'm better than him being all stubborn and everything, you know, I'm being arrogant. I like the way he approached it as, like, you know what I'm saying, with a real basketball standpoint. I appreciate that. Let's jump back into it. You know, uh, like, I, if, I think, you know, it's, it's a team game. I think deep down he knew that Bird was a better player. And for someone as good as Chuck <laughs> to be stumped like that in an interview shows you how heavy the weight of Larry Bird's legacy was. Former teammate Kevin McHale also references how unreal Bird was to play with. McHale was Bird's right-hand man while playing with Boston, claiming the Sixth Man of the Year award twice, along with seven All-Star appearances. 
His story of a specific Detroit game is fascinating. There was a bit of time left on the clock and we had beaten Detroit and I just scored 56 and I'm walking off the court and Larry said, where are you going? I said, I'm done. I said, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Larry goes, don't do it, man. Cause when I get that hot, I'm not coming out of the game. A week later, he got that hot. He looked at me at about 50 points and he looked at me and said, I told you. The pair would go on. Hey, no! That's why I like Larry. I see that attitude right there, bro. He, and, but he told him at the same time, like, hey, bro, don't get out the game. Because I'm telling you, if I'm coming if I'm coming up on 40, 50, I'm telling Coach, keep me in. You play next week. And remember that he nasty like that, though. The next week. The next week, he coming. <laughs> he hooping. He got 60. Hey, I'm not getting out, bro. Dead ass. <laughs> Let's get On to win three titles together. And Mikhail would continue to tell stories that live on in Celtics folklore forevermore. A highlight being a throwback from Bird's brutal trash talk at a game in Phoenix. We have a play, out of bounds play, I'm taking it out, and um, Larry says, I'm going to bust off the play, and I'm just going to come out, and I'm going to shoot a three, and I'm like, we're down two. I'm like, no, don't do that. I'm like, just, <laughs> let's shoot a two, please. Go to the hole and try to get fouled. Let's just Larry, get into overtime, see if we can't win this game. And Larry says, no, nah, I'm just going to bust a three on him. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So he tells us, tells the Phoenix bench, um, tells the coaches, yeah, I'm just fixing to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. And he gets the ball, jumps out, that busts the play, crazy. comes out, gets the ball to slot, shoots the ball. As the ball's in the air, he kind of turns towards the Phoenix bench and yells, told you so. <laughs> Larry's mental game was such that he could just open up any team and tear them apart. He would use psychological warfare on a regular basis. Players speak of his toughness not because of his size or physicality, but because of his mind. He would impose his will on the opposition and could force them off their game just as much as he could switch on his. A mastermind at Trash Talk Tactics, Larry Bird will forever go down in history as one of the greatest trash talkers mastermind. of all time. And in the 80s, that yes. mattered. With players such as Bill Lambier, Hakeem Olajuwon, Magic Johnson, and the eventual emergence of Michael Jordan, Bird did what was necessary in order to gain that mental edge that took him over the top. James Worthy, the 1988 Finals MVP, simply stated that Larry was trash talking all the time, but the problem was he could back it up. Well, yeah, he, he could back it up. So uh, <laughs> when you're arrogant and you can back it up, you're not arrogant, you're just good. And, you know what I'm saying? And Larry was good. Even Warther's <laughs> former teammate Magic Johnson spoke on the fact that he had a real dislike for Larry Bird as far back as their college playing days for the very reason that Larry would constantly get the better of him. Johnson claimed in a recent interview during a press build-up for the Broadway play about the pair that after he beat Larry in the... Hey, <laughs> I didn't... Like, hey, going through that documentary, y'all asked me to watch, bro, I'm learning, like, that rivalry is, like, way deeper than I knew, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't even know they had played in college and all that, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? They played on the same team. Like, it's a lot that I didn't know, so I appreciate y'all for giving me that one. But at the same time, it's always going to come back, every time. No matter what, what Larry Bird video we watching, there's always going to be a magic. And I know y'all asking for that magic passing video is coming. Whatever video y'all drop down in the comments, I got it coming. It's a lot of comments, so I'll be trying to get to them all, you know what I'm saying? But I do appreciate y'all for rocking with me. That's why we coming with hella content for y'all, bro. Let's jump back into it. NCAA championship game in 1979, the most watched college basketball game ever. By the time he got to the Lakers, they were 0-8 and eight to the Celtics. You had to hate the Celtics to beat them because when I got here, we were 0-4, I think, 8. And then the first time against the Celtics in the in championship series. And then we lost that in 84. That made us 0 for 9, I believe. And later is quoted as saying, when I played, Larry Bird was the only one I feared. Not bad when hearing it from a five-time champion and one That's of the three respect, great basketball bro. players of all time. At the 2019 NBA Awards, Johnson received the NBA Lifetime Achievement Award, but it was shared with, guess who? Larry Bird. Bird was simply the king of they talking to talk. Yo, they connected no matter what. The Lifetime Achievement Award, they got it together. Yo, they they, they like twins. Twins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing like, and then they game so similar. That's what I like. I don't really like, I don't even want to like knock nobody out of this rivalry. I, I believe in the rivalry. And I, like, I think if them two would have been on the same team, they would have ran the league, but that's not something they would have let happen. But at the same time, bro, like they game so identical. And I, like, like I said, I don't even feel like Magic even that much more athletic than Larry, like I feel like it's pretty much there. They like he probably a little bit more athletic, but they the same height. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like it was a it was a match made in heaven, bro. Let's jump back into it. And actually going out and walking the walk. Listen, man, retirement is great for you because you've never talked this long. <laughs>
Dominique Wilkins recounts one of the most famous games where Larry Bird promised Kevin McHale he was going to break McHale's record against Atlanta. Wilkins said, He got so hot <laughs> in that game that you talk about that patented step back. He was doing that step back and he switched it to his left hand three separate times in that game. He hit a three. He was scoring anywhere on the floor Ooh, that he wanted. Is this when the I bitch mean, was, was giving each other five? The bitch was giving each other five. So did you get in a fight with them after the game? Forget, I, forget Larry. Did well, you beat anybody on the bench? Because you're giving five, he's scoring on me. Yes. Every one of those Your guys got fined 3000 no, okay. <laughs> Larry's legend lives on because of the greats that want to tell them. The reason there's a list of top 10 players who consistently call Bird their toughest opponent Ooh. or one of their all-time greats is because Larry himself is in that list. Larry is a top 10 baller of all time. His style doesn't matter yeah. when his skill sinks the opposition. Because above all, the opposition will remember. They'll remember the steals, the shots, the clutch plays, and the trash talk. They'll remember the bird from the early 80s, not from the early 90s. The Larry who stepped out on the court in his warm-up jacket and made Michael Jordan recoil in envy. MJ announced, He didn't take off his top yet. I didn't see when he took off his top. Well, when Bird did, it was all business. He may as well have taken a mop and bucket to the floor because he was about to clean up. He was an impetuous and never relenting opponent that took the life from anyone who stepped onto his battlefield. The consensus is a resounding stamp of legendary status for the man who will forever go down in the history books as one of the greatest ever players, and arguably the greatest ever Celtic to grace the court. What did you think of Larry Bird in his prime? Yeah, I think a prime bird was the baddest ever to walk this earth. Like, I'm just saying, but it's because of the way he, like, okay, if LeBron had Larry Bird attitude, he would have been a bad mother, watch your mouth, you know what I'm saying? He's a bad person, you know, he's a bad dude, but like, y'all get what I'm saying, if he had that arrogant attitude, like, hey, bro, I'm gonna shoot it right here, you know what I'm saying, ain't none of y'all can stop me, who coming in second? Like, I need that type of energy from him, he would be the the unrelented goat, but he's not, he's not that, he's not that man, he's not that guy. It's okay though. It's okay. But this video was definitely good. It's, I always love seeing the legends respected. Even MJ himself said, look, he never took his top off yet. And then after that, he was like, I'd hate to see if he took it off. <laughs> he won it without <laughs> taking it off, bro. Like, it's crazy. But, um, yeah, man. Yeah, Larry Bird in my top 10. I think he's number six, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm, 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 I'm going to go through my list. But, like, he didn't, he didn't move up the list. He was, not, he was not in my top 10 prior to these reactions. But now he is. So, I appreciate y'all for watching. Let's try to get this video to at least 2,000 likes. And I appreciate everybody that been subscribing. Especially our old guys. The fam. The bird gang, bro. I appreciate y'all. Can't forget about y'all. Uh, and I appreciate the new guys that are going to subscribe and helping us to build. Make sure y'all are following her channel. Hakeem Lamette. I'm going to put it down in the description. I hope you know what it is. And I'm out your dick.